The next main section I want to tackle is the underside of the chassis. There have actually been more repairs on this set than I realized. For example, there's a loose capacitor here is a replacement. I think the ceramic cap is a replacement, as is this. Also, if you recall, I mentioned about the thermistor being just gone. It should be right in here. Well, something else that's bad is every section of this filament dropping resistor. should be one section here, one here, and one here. All three are open. And this lead would have originally been connected to something. Very likely that was cut when they installed the replacement CRT with a higher filament voltage. Here's where that resistor is on the schematic. So you got three sections, A, B, C. All of them are open. I also checked on the pilot light which goes across the B section and that number 44 bulb is also open. So somehow that blew open, that blew open, that blew open, and all three sections of that are open. <laughs> now I know these sets are known for being unreliable and flaky but I can't understand what could have possibly caused that except for some kind of high voltage surge. So who knows, maybe uh, there was some kind of uh, major power surge at the outlet, maybe lightning struck, something like that, while the set was turned on, which would have caused the big pulse to go through all these parts and blown them out. Nice thing though is that all the tube filaments are intact. So I guess these safety devices did their job and protected, uh, most importantly, the pitcher tube filament. Alright, so... I am going to get cracking on this. Uh, first I want to uh, uh, kind of, well not first, but I want to put everything back the way it's supposed to be. So get a properly mounted capacitor in here and I'm not sure if these replacements here are the proper values. I want to get everything squared away so it matches the schematic. Uh, one lousy thing in the service info is that Oh, where did I put it? The only dot... Ah, here it is. Normally SAMS is pretty good about providing a nice photograph and part identification diagram. For example, here's the one for the main board I just worked on. But in this case, they combined the one for the chassis with a resistance measurement chart, so there's not a whole lot of room left on this page. Look at this is a pretty high quality scan, so if I get in there close, it's not so bad. I looked up the service info for this set in Riders, I think it's in volume 25. And it has a lot less info from the SAMs, there's only four or five pages on it. It's basically just a schematic and basic alignment instructions. I've heard that if you can get your hands on the original Filco service info, it's pretty darn good, but uh, I haven't managed to yet. I've seen one or two copies on eBay, but uh, I, I lost out on the bidding. Hopefully somebody someday will make a scan of those and provide them for free download online. Alright, so I guess I'll just pick a corner, maybe down here, and get to it. I think it'll be mostly just clipping out some caps and putting in new ones. Checking the resistors too, of course. Things are progressing nicely. I've got this corner just about done. One thing I wanted to mention is that there was a big capacitor down in here. Well, that's right across the AC line. It's here on the schematic. You should really replace that with a capacitor rated for AC line operation. I picked up a few. These are type X2. X meaning they can go across the AC line and they are rated for 250 volts AC. Notice they're much smaller than the original, but they do the job and do it a lot better. Because when these fail, say there's a power surge and they burn out, these fail safely. They won't catch on fire, they won't explode. The only problem is they have little dinky leads, so I had to attach some extensions. Now the original went from here all the way over to a ground point here just because it's so physically large. The new one's much smaller and there's a much closer grounding point. So I'm just going to install it down in here. 
If you recall, I mentioned that all three sections on this power resistor were bad. Well, I picked up some replacements made up from discrete resistors. I ordered these a while ago, and since then I uh, placed another order and I decided to go with these guys. I just uh, think they look cooler. And um, they're also rated a bit more appropriately wattage wise. These are just one with all 15, which are fine, but it's really overkill. The reason I know that is, refer back to the schematic, there's the three sections 13, 17, and 8. Well, we know that we've got 600 milliamps flowing through this branch and a bit of current flowing through the others as well, extra, because they go to other tube filaments in that pilot light there. Uh, but anyways, for example, with the 8 ohms, power is current squared times resistance. 0.6 squared is 0.36 times 8. Well, rounded up to 10, it's 3.5 watts, basically. So 15 watts is a bit overkill, so I got one here at 6.5 watts. And these are similarly rated as appropriate. So I'll simply connect to these three in series and hook them in here. Now either set of these resistors would work just fine. But personally, I like these a little bit better. They're encapsulated in some type of high temperature silicone material whereas these are assembled from a ceramic uh, box basically and then it's filled in with some kind of cement like material on the back side I think these are just a little bit cleaner and nicer looking cost difference is fairly negligible also, I like this company better. These are Zycon. These are made by Dale. Been around a long time. I took a closer look at that clipped lead on the power resistor, and I can definitely tell it used to go to this lug. Additionally, someone has added a jumper wire from this lug to this lug. I'm pretty sure the reason they did that is because the original 2.35 volt pitcher tube was replaced with a 6.3 volt pitcher tube. All these tube filaments are connected in series. You can see where the pitcher tube goes right here. And they show the voltage drop across that just being 2 volts. Well, now that we've got a 6.3 volt tube in here with a higher resistance, that will cut down the current that can flow through these tubes. So the procedure recommended in the, in the uh, pitcher tube replacement notes was to short out this 8 ohm resistor, which would allow more current to flow in, which would compensate for the higher resistance down in here. Well, that's all well and good if we still had 117 volts at the outlet, but typically we now have over 120 volts, so now we actually should put that resistance back in. And even if we still had 117 volts at the outlet, I'd be inclined to leave that resistor in anyways because starving the tubes of a little bit of current will help extend their life. And for sure you don't want to have too much current going through them because that will really shorten their life. After I get all this done, if I want, I could hook up an AC ammeter in series somewhere in here and double check to make sure that it's 600 milliamps or maybe a little less. Okay, I finished replacing all the paper caps, all the resistors, including the filament dropper here, and the filament thermistor. So that leaves one task left, which is the electrolytics. The one here had been replaced sometime in the past, and I've taken it out. And I tacked in the replacement temporarily just so I would know which wire goes to what. And I wasn't sure what I was going to do to, uh, to mount this down. And then I remembered that when I worked on that Filco Town and Country, there was a capacitor in there that will be just perfect. 
it has that same cardboard covering because it served the same role in that set. The reason you want that cardboard cover is that this goes right on the AC line. This is part of the voltage doubler. It's that guy right there. So the negative, the outside metal of the can, goes right to the AC line. It's definitely one to have that covered in cardboard and it cannot make contact with the chassis. I just took the cardboard cover off to make it easier to open this up because I want to restuff it and put this capacitor inside of this can. Then I'll put the cardboard back on it and I will mount it down in there. Here's the photo from the SAMS photo fact and it shows what the original capacitor would have looked like. It's just pretty much identical to what I just showed you. The only thing I'll have to dig up is a metal strap to hold it down. Something very similar to this. So this is just a one section cap. Just gets that one capacitor inside. This guy is going to be a bit more work. It has, I think, four sections in it. So I'll have to remove the wires here, carefully making note of which one goes where. Remove the quarter inch screw holding it down, get it out, and then pop it open to recap, or to restuff rather. And then there's one more on the other side. You can see the bottom poking through here. It has three sections in it. So all together we got four, three, one, eight electrolytic capacitors to replace.